Good evening. On behalf of Three Sheets Nation, the place where drinks come true, we welcome all of you to the podcast, Three Sheets to the Mouse. We are gathered here tonight around the adult beverages to share a drink, to share a thought, and to share news. We hope you enjoy our story tonight, Erections of Earth. Sorted, but you'll be rewarded when at last I am given my dues. And injustice deliciously squared, be free, free. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode number 299 of Three Sheets, the penultimate episode. Not that we're ending at 300, but it's kind of a milestone, so I'm calling it the penultimate. Anyway, we're the podcast. Likes to focus on the adult side of Disney. From parks to movies to dining, we'll cover everything Disney has to offer, but most importantly, their drinks tonight. My name's Mikey, and tonight I'm joined by two heathens and a holy man. Adam? What's up? Maria? Hi. Hi. Monsignor Brian? Hello, my son. (laughs) Oh, boy. So grab a box of consecrated wafers and let's jump right into this episode. Holy cow. I'll go right to Brian. Have you got some communion? What what are you drinking tonight? I whipped up a blackberry smash. I took your advice with the crown blackberry and put it on top of another whiskey. Then I had some lime sour and a little limoncello and then some club soda. Did you find it kind of helped adding a little extra whiskey to the crown? Yeah, but then you also need some syrup and sweetener to cut that medicinal flavor. You get the right mix, and it's good. So basically, you just deconstruct the whole thing and then rebuild it. <laughs> I mean, if you get a bottle of Blackberry Crown, just get some more shit to go with it, Maria. Okay. Mm-hmm. Get a bottle of Blackberry Crown, just flush it down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Same shit. <laughs> well, I'd rather not waste my money, and I won't get the Crown. <laughs> well, what alcohol are you having right now, Adam? I am actually having some Quackenbush Amber Rum. And this is from Albany Distilling Company. Oh. It's actually super smooth. And I can actually drink it without any mixers. Oh, like a Zacapa. It's not as sweet as Zacapa. Yeah, it is super sweet. I think that's why we all thought it was great. I mean, it's still great. but No, it's very good. Like, Zacapa to me has a very strong... Like sugarcane taste to it. It's not necessarily yeah. sweet. It just tastes like sugarcane. Mm-hmm. I know that doesn't make sense, but if you had it, you'd kind of know what I meant. Whereas this, it has that little bit of sweet rum taste, but it's not the same sweetness. Hmm. Maybe I'll try it. If there's any left. We'll see. <laughs> Maria, what are you drinking tonight? Well, I did have a Corona premiere earlier. Um, that was my second one of the night. I finished that before we started recording. So now I have a seltzer. I know you're shocked. Actually, it's been a while since I've had a seltzer on the show. Did you add something or mix something with it? Nope, I did not. The world is coming to an end. Just a straight seltzer. This actually tastes pretty good. It's a Mighty Swell, and it's a mango raspberry. So so it's not just a clever name. It is Mighty Swell. It is Mighty Swell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It came in a variety pack. I know you're shocked. Oh, again, my surprise (laughs) phase. Yeah. Three of the four flavors are good. Every time with you. The papaya guava. There's always one flavor. Every single time. There's always one flavor (laughs) in a multi-pack. The memory is like, this is disgusting. I know. The papaya guava is disgusting. I took one sip and I was like, nope. And I dumped it down the drain. Because I refuse to drink something I do not like. What about you, Mikey? What you got there in that cup? Well... It is, uh, when we record this, the 30th of June, which is the last day of my dry June, so I've, I've just got Diet Dr. Pepper. I do love a good Dr. Pepper. I have made it all month, plus about five days beforehand. Awesome. Very nice. Well, that's what we're drinking. I mean, and whatever Maria's doing. <laughs> Let us know what you're drinking there on our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash three sheet. Just type in three sheets top that'll take you right to us if not already a member maria will let you in one day and if you are already a member just get to say hey you know what i had while i listened to this show 
Okay, tonight, let's just jump right into it. This is hard for me, based on Dry June, having to talk about basically a virtual drinking around Epcot. <laughs> is this kind of what we're doing here, drinking around the world, I guess? So, listen, we've been doing this podcast for 299 episodes, plus around 40 to 60 little quickies in there. We're getting old in the tooth, and of course... When we started, we all kind of had our own opinions about what drinks you have to have at each of the different pavilions when you're going around Epcot. It was a learning experience for me because I hadn't done a lot of drinking uh, around the world at the time. So, you know, my first and second and third time down there, I kind of worked my way through a lot of the, you gotta try this, drinks. And I'm sure we've all done that because you either see a post on Instagram or Twitter, X, TikTok, I don't know why. Like, well, here's the drink of the week, you know, let's get down there and have that. So I was like, hey, let's revisit must-do drinks around Epcot. Maria said, fantastic idea. Let me create a spreadsheet and a Google document and a poll, and we'll go see what the masses think about it. And off she went. And by masses, we mean... Our admins yeah. and our hosts. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. The, the motliest group of people that we could come up with between the admin team and all of those that are hosting the show now. So this is not like Family Feud where we hunt surveyed 100 people to get these answers. Well, there's a solid... 14. Like 18. <laughs> 14. 14, 14. <laughs> you know, just north of the baker's dozen. So we're going to go around, uh, I assume. I have no... Maria, how is this going to go? Um, Brian, what are we doing? I- I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we're going to go around the lagoon, and I think yeah. we each have areas, so I don't know. Yeah. Ask Maria. She's going to cheat anyway. I'm not cheating. No, wait, Adam, this is your episode. How are we doing this? <laughs> There's no way for me to cheat. Believe me, I looked at yes, it. I tried. I typed everything out, but you can't cheat. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and she's still upset about it. I am very bad. <laughs> <laughs> she is big mad. <laughs> she, she is. She's an angry elf. Right, okay. <laughs> so pretty much correct. We're going to hit each country going around the world. And of course, as one does, we start in Mexico. Well, most people start in Mexico. That's not the cheater well, way. Well, if you enter from International Gateway, all bets are off. Right. Exactly. And that's the yes. proper way to do it. So Correct. That's the cheater way. But <laughs> yeah, we have because to... then I'm hitting France and everything. Right, that's, and going the other it, way. <laughs> I never make it out of that immediate <laughs> no, area though. If I start there though, because it's not a good. He's hitting time. France I'm... and going right back to the Skyliner. See you later. If I go into international country, you have UK, you have France. I've made it to America, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and you just Pretty sit much. on the floor. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm, take I'm out of done. I'm and... smashed. <laughs> yep. Mexico, believe it or not, is the safer route because there's more <laughs> beer and stuff that I drink when I come from the Mexico way than when I... Because you get a couple of countries in and you're like, I can't do mixed drinks anymore. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> well, no, I just, there's drinks that I don't like. True. Too, and we're going to run into that situation even in the bowl. Yeah. So in Mexico, we actually had a tie for first. And this is one of the ones that I thought Marie was definitely going to cheat on. I because would never. Because it's one of her most hated drinks and one of her most loved drinks. Yeah, that's true. We have the avocado margarita, which the recipe has changed. Oh, really? They actually changed the tequila in it. They changed it to a mezcal. Oh. So it used to be a tequila margarita, but now it's a mezcal. Oh. And this is made with melon orange liquor, fresh avocado, lime juice, hibiscus salt rim. The original was made with trombo blanco tequila in 1750. So you can get it either way. Hmm. If you tell them you want it, the classic one, or this is one of my favorites. I really enjoy this. I think, Maria, you described it as slime. I love (laughs) avocado. I love avocado. It's not the ingredients. It's the viscosity of the drink. I understand that. But it's like a smoothie to me. It just reminds me of a smoothie. I think maybe I need to try it again. With the mezcal, I might even like it a little bit better. So, Mikey, have you had it? I have not. I've actually only ever been to La Cava one time. Okay. And I believe... I got the cucumber margarita. Did they used to have one of those? I think they, they still did. do. I remember thinking this was very refreshing. It was a wax. It wasn't a frozen right. Right. It, was, it was fine. Brian, have you had it? Yes, I have. And what do you think of it? It's good. I mean, my go-to there is a corn old-fashioned, but... Okay. Were you the one who chose that? Yeah, that was me in the survey for that. Okay. Probably the only one. You are the only one who chose <laughs> that, and we'll go over that a little bit, too. I have the <laughs> sheet up in front of me. The next one is Maria's favorite drink. Mm-hmm. 
but let's see if it's her favorite when she finds out what's in it. I know what's in it. Oh, do you? Oh, yes, what's I in do. It? it has mint. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> but you can't taste the mint. I mean, I like mint. You can't taste anything <laughs> in this drink. <laughs> it's fine. That's it's true. <laughs> you can taste mezcal and they, blackberry. That's about it. If you're lucky, you could taste the mezcal. I don't taste the smokiness from the mezcal at oh, all. Oh, I do. When I've had it. It's the Black Magic Margarita. It's mezcal, blackberry puree, cassis, liquor, lime, and mint. I couldn't find a price on it because it's not a permanent menu item, allegedly. So this one can go at any given moment. It's expensive. I mean, wasn't it north of 20? Like, I want to say $24 or 21. something. Oh, I heard it was about $75. <laughs> so I don't know. It's like 21 22 It's a lot. Someone said the Nautilus was real expensive. <laughs> and then Neil Patrick Harris was all like, hold my doogie. <laughs> All I taste in this every time I've gotten it was the blackberry puree. I don't... Really? I mean, you taste a little bit of a liquor taste, but you can tell me anything's in it, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it, it's just... There's nothing <laughs> special about it to me. It's oh. just a really fucking expensive drink. It is expensive, but I definitely taste the mezcal. I mean, but it's not even a tall mezcal, which... No. Which makes it less of a value to me. I mean, at least some of your other margaritas that are... And there were a bunch of margaritas listed for this topic mm -hmm. for this particular area. Have call tequilas, have call mezcals, and this one doesn't. Interesting. We know how Maria feels. You know how I feel. Mikey, what do you think? I don't need it. Well, you don't need it. <laughs> Listen, my response was I don't usually stop here for a drink. And if I do, I'm just getting a standard margarita, I think is what I put down on my answer. Because if I had to pick one, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't stop here very often. I don't, I'm not a margarita guy. That's fair. I do have to say, Brian's choice. I've had the corn old fashioned. It is very good. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised about how good it was, to be honest. I am more of a tequila person. What makes it, this is a dumb blonde question. <laughs> is it corn liquor? I don't understand. Like, what makes it a corn old fashioned? Well, they actually shuck corn. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually served in a husk. Fuck off, Adam. <laughs> like a tamale almost. <laughs> almost. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys That's are funny. idiots. Is it a corn liquor? So the corn old fashioned is a Belasco corn whiskey, illegal reposado okay. mezcal, La Cava barrel. Oh. So it's their barrel of the mezcal. 10 to 1 dark rum, lost Irish whiskey, next to corn liqueur. Roaming Man Rye Bourbon and Mole Bitters. That's a lot. Holy shit. <laughs> this is basically a Long Island iced tea. It doesn't taste that strong, though. No, and granted, it's $22. Okay. It still sounds better than the blackberry puree. <laughs> Here's a cup of blackberry puree with a splash of mezcal. Enjoy. Yeah. And I was going to say that I've never had the black magic because I haven't taken out another mortgage on my house, but then <laughs> my corn old fashioned is twenty two dollars. Right? So <laughs> to be fair, the black magic is about three, four hundred dollars. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And with interest rates these days, I mean <laughs> You three are the worst. <laughs> the worst. Thank you very much. Moving on. The other thing that made the list, but I think there were a bunch of one votes on this. So we had the horchata margarita. We had the mango margarita. So basically all the margaritas. It's Mexico. Yeah. Next on my list, I had Norway. <laughs> I mean, it's there. Yeah. I'm looking at the answers. They used to have an aquavit shot. They did. Oh, you only get that if you hate yourself. You just down it and move on. It's high test. So it's... it was oh. like, if you want to get your party started, that's what you get. Ugh. Most people here chose the beer, but it was ass beer, <laughs> and I have no idea what the fuck that means. It's a Pilsner that they have there, and it's one of my favorite pictures is of the sign at that cart, because they actually have the pronunciation underneath it for you. Because oh, okay. you're not supposed to pronounce it ass beer, and they don't really like it if you order it that way. Well. But the last time I was there, I don't on. think it was there. Yeah. I don't remember if they were just out of it or if it wasn't on the menu anymore. They probably got sick of people asking for ass beer. <laughs> so that's why here I voted for the troll creme just because it's fun to say and I'm a 12-year-old boy. But a lot of people still put that beer yeah. and said that it's not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. 
So big one here was pure. There was one other vote, and it well, I don't know what a troll crim. It's a frozen drink. I couldn't find it on the cart when I was looking. Yeah, I couldn't find it either, so I kind of <laughs> left it off. I'm like, I don't know what this is. Maybe it's food. That's where my brain went. <laughs> no. It is a frozen drink. For all I know, it may not even be alcoholic. Fair enough. I'm a 12-year-old boy, and it's fun to say troll crap. I just have no idea. Like, I couldn't find it, so I'm like, yeah, I don't know if this is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is good. I've had it before. Now you have something to look for next time you're there. Looks like yes. cranberry juice, Definitely. ice cream, and rum. Okay. Is that track? Yeah. That sounds about right, yes. Okay. <laughs> like a spiked slush. Yeah. There you go. The actual drink drink with that one here, then, was the frozen Viking coffee. And this is from Kringle Bakery. And this is Bailey Irish Cream Liqueur and Kamora Coffee Liqueur. So it's basically Kahlua and <laughs> Irish cream and a frozen coffee. <laughs> um, I've had this one. It tastes like a milkshake. It's delicious. Yeah, Bailey's in. I was going to say, I, w- I wouldn't hate it. Yeah, there's nothing in there that's bad. It's just nothing in there that I would go out of my way for. I've not had it frozen. I've only ever had Viking coffee hot. Oh. Because I don't like frozen okay coffees or cold brews and shit, shit like that so i had it hot in the middle of fucking summer one time oh god <laughs> because you're yes. mighty well because i'm looking at it like well everybody gets beers here so i'm gonna get the literally only mixed drink that it looks like they have in kringola mm-hmm. my favorite comment on this particular one is they all suck <laughs> Yeah, I don't know who that was. And whose email is attached to that? This is truly an anonymous thing, which I kind of dig that, actually. Okay, cool. Yeah, it is kind of fun. All right, so trying a big shocker here. Tipsy Ducks and Love one. <laughs> which I have heard is like the sweetest drink on property. It's sweet. I don't know if it's the sweetest. I wouldn't say it's the sweetest. Well, what would be then? <sighs> Um, Tipsy ducks in love with more chocolate sauce. <laughs> Which is the wrong thing to have extra of in that no. in that drink. Yeah. So this drink isn't the sweetest, but this drink is the sweetest. <laughs> if you can't name another drink that's the sweetest, chances are it's this one. Mm. I haven't had all the other. <laughs> the, the Grand Marnier is pretty sweet to me. It's sweet, but not this sweet. There's a tang to the Grand Marnier to me. You're right. It's a different type of sweet. Mm-hmm. That's true. This is just yeah. like sugar sweet. I mean, this is this is a chocolate coffee sweet kind of. There's a lot of chocolate in this. But uh, you also have to realize I take my coffee black most of the time. Right. So this is just too sweet. This is one of the few times a year I will have a foo-foo coffee. That's what I call them. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. This is above and beyond because this is not just coffee, but it's cold tea. Yes. Blended with bourbon and chocolate. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to try this next time, but I'm going to have like an iced coffee that I can dump half of it into so I can get more Ooh, coffee out of it. That would be good. Good plan. I thought of this when I was like looking at this. I'm like, you know, yeah. everybody complains this is so sweet. So maybe stop by a Joffrey's car, yeah. mm-hmm. drink half my black coffee. Mm-hmm. And then pour that in there. Yep. The second runner-up on this one was the Kung Fu Punch. And this is vodka, triple sec, mango, and orange juice. That's usually what I get. Yeah, it's usually what I get, too, if I have to get a drink. It's okay. There's nothing special about it. I think it's what Stephanie gets if we go there and she wants to get a drink. Because she absolutely does not want the Tipsy Ducks in love. (laughs) Besides Mikey, who here has had the Tipsy Duck in love? Oh, I have. And finished it. I have. Did you like it? Yeah, I like it. It's Todd's favorite drink as well. Would you order it again? Oh, yeah. But you said before we started that usually ends up with Kung Fu Punch. That's because if I'm with Todd, Todd gets the Tipsy Ducks. So Fair enough. So I'll take a couple sips of his, and he takes a couple sips of mine. We usually would share. Brian, have you had it? I have had it before. I finished it. It's not an every time thing. It's not a must-have for me, but occasionally. Okay. I won't order it. When somebody turns to me and says, it's sweet, I already know, yeah, this is not going to work. I mean, it's definitely sweet, but it's not, like, toothache sweet. That's not what I've heard. But my tolerance for sweet is very different, different than yours. Yeah, now, I know the yeah. ingredients say that it got cream in it, and I don't think that's the whipped cream. Do they actually put, like, a sweet cream with the I coffee think it's and part the, of the tea? Cold tea? Yeah. I don't know. There's an honorable mention here, and that is the Canto Lupi. From what I understand, again, this is another drink that they don't make anymore. But I did some digging, and I found a recipe for y'all. It is two ounces of vodka, four ounces of cantaloupe juice, 
one and a half to three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, a quarter ounce of lime juice, and Maria's favorite, a mint garnish. <laughs> that fucking mint. <laughs> why, why are you garnishing with mint? It's not even needed. It's not enhancing the drink. Because that'd be a meaty fucking wedge if they put a slice of cantaloupe on the side of it. Terrible. <laughs> that would be a fucking meaty wedge, wouldn't it? So, Germany, I know you're all going to be shocked, but there are two beers. And this is, <laughs> of course, the first one is the Schaffenhofer, which was our drink when we all first started out. And there were some comments with the gin. You cannot get the gin. You would actually have to go to a bar cart to get a shot of gin to add the gin here. Yeah. You usually cannot get the gin from the same place you get the shop and offer because they, it's just a beer cart. I've had both of these. They're beer. I think I burnt myself out a little bit on the shop. I won't drink it without the gin at this point. I guess mm. it's become like really sweet and I don't know if something's changed about it but I don't remember it being that sweet. It also could be because I'm getting old. It's always been okay. It's always been a little sweet. That beer specifically is very sweet. Without the gin, it's Kool Aid. It's like what three <laughs> percent? <laughs> it's it's like less than Miller Lite. That's you how can't... my mom made Kool Aid with beer. Wait a second. <laughs> no, no, three <laughs> percent. <laughs> very good beer. Three percent beer Kool Aid. That's where I pictured that. Just that. <laughs> 97% Kool-Aid, 3% beer. 3% beer. There is an honorable mention, though, and that is the Mozart liquor, the chocolate shot in Germany. Did anybody yes. put down the apple shot? No. No. The fuck you say? So the next country that we're visiting is Italy, and this was... a like a runaway yeah. hit. The Italian margarita was like by far what everybody was getting when you go into Italy. So you can get this at, it's called Gelateria Toscana. It's the little gelato cart that's like, if you're looking at the pavilion, it's off to the right hand side. The Italian margarita is frozen limoncello, tequila, and as per the Disney website says, margarita. This one is only twelve dollars. Yes, that's cheap. And it's an authentic drink, right? Like this is straight from oh, Italy, of course, because <laughs> oh, Italy yeah. and Mexico are really <laughs> close together. One of our admins or one of our other hosts had said Peroni, and one had said the frozen sangria. And our next one is the American Adventure. To no one's surprise, <laughs> we're going to the Regal Eagle Smokehouse Outdoor Bar. And the first one, we have a couple here. So the Blackberry Moonshine Sour is the one that most people put down on our yeah. our little survey. A true, like, huge majority of one by. Yes. It wasn't quite a runaway, like the Schaffer Hoffer or the Italian Margarita was, but this was pretty close. So if you are wanting to make a moonshine sour at home, I don't have the, uh, I have the ingredients, not the measurements, but you can figure it out. Uh, Old Smoky Blackberry Moonshine. Mm -hmm. Talk about sweet. That's got to be sweet. It's sweet if you drink it by itself. Blood Orange. I'm going to say there's a Blood Orange mix. And the only reason why I know all this is because Russell sent me a kit to make it. Oh, shut up. Yeah. Really? It's long gone. There's an actual company that makes a blood orange mixer that worked perfectly. And then there was... Is it kind of like margarita mix? Like yes. Like we made margarita mix? Like yes, a blood orange mix? Okay. Yes. It's very similar to that. The recipe that I found had lemon juice in it. Yeah. This says lemon. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming it's the blood orange mix, the blackberry juice, and lemon juice. No, there was actual monin syrup in it. Oh. Yes. Monin is so sweet. But it was just like that tiniest hint because okay. there was a decent amount of lemon juice in it to take the alcohol burn out, to take the sourness okay. of the lemon out. The monin syrup actually, like that little splash of it, actually balanced the drink out. Huh. Interesting. So this one is $14. So here's the thing. And I don't know if it's just because I live in a tourist area already. So maybe I'm just used to these prices. Yeah. But... At the restaurant, our specialty cocktails are $13. So going to Disney and paying $14 for a specialty cocktail, which is larger than mm -hmm. the ones that we give you at the restaurant, <laughs> yeah. that's not really that 
bad. Oh, the second place is fucking horrible. It's a frozen mint julep. I like it. Shut your it's whore so mouth, bad. Maria. It is not horrible. No one's pouring it down your it throat. It is so horrible. This disgustingness in a cup is a Jim Beam black extra aged bourbon, citrus, and mint. <laughs> Lots and lots of fucking mint. You'll be picking mint out of your fucking teeth for days. So much mint is in here. Well, gee, Maria, what is it called? It's a mint julep. (laughs) Frozen mint julep. And then you get the floater and you spend a little time stirring it in. And Mm -hmm. There you go. It's a worthy second place. Problem is with all the frozen drinks here is that there's really not a lot of shade. No. In that area? Yeah. yeah. Correct. So... Most of your drinks that are frozen don't don't stay frozen for no. very long. <laughs> no. They really don't. And that helps the floater mix in, so. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. Right. There you go. And if you are with a bunch of sheeters, you just kind of casually, slowly take over that area. And the people who were sitting at the table just randomly decide to get up and leave because that's a lot of people that are talking to each other. There's a really big group that's starting to assemble. I'm just going to go. Have we all had the moonshine sour? Yes. yes. I have had that. That was yes. my vote. Mine. Okay. I've had that one as well. I did not vote for either the first or the second place. I always get the Ruby Red Bird. It's what is good. It? I like it. It's a beer. Oh. It's a grapefruit beer. But it's not as sweet as Schafferhofer. Not nearly as sweet as Schafferhofer. So it tastes more like a beer. That's usually my good My go-to. You're not the only one. Somebody chose the blood orange cider. True. Is that the same blood orange cider that you can get at Baseline? I don't know. And there was a vote for the Tennessee Lemonade. Yeah, which is also very good. And then my least favorite vote. Somebody put Yingling. Oh, that was probably Chris Trosel. Why? Because. Because it's the oldest brewery in America. On, right. It says it on their label. I toured the factory <laughs> of the oldest brewery in America. I've been there, I know, but it, it's so mass produced now that it's not the same beer that you used to get. Mm-mm. And that you can get from the beer cart. Mm-hmm. Correct. All right. We move into Japan after America, as one does. This was one where it was kind of predictable what the first place would be because it's obviously the drink that right now everybody associates with Japan. When you think about Epcot and Japan Pavilion, because it is very photogenic, it almost seems like it's a requirement. Should you order this drink, you need to go out in front of Epcot where you can get the gate in the background, snap a photo of it. And what you uh, say? The gay in the background? What? Yes, you got to get that gay in the background. <laughs> Adam needs to stand in the background. Nobody puts <laughs> baby in a corner. Exactly. <laughs> We're not. We're uh, putting them in the background. <laughs> but this would be the, the Violet Saki, which is becoming more and more popular. And Brian had mentioned it to me before we started recording that it's available at like a couple, three different places there within the Japan Pavilion. But it's not on a fucking digital Disney menu <laughs> anywhere I could find. So to tell you what the hell is in it, I just found like a copycat recipe and good luck. I guess. This was four ounces of a dry sake, just any dry sake, it says. Some Monin Desert Pear Syrup, Mm -hmm. some sweetened lime juice, and water. Well, the second place was uh, just literally any sake. (laughs) (laughs) Sake tastes like feet. (laughs) No. No, not not if you get the right Mm -hmm. one. There's wrong sake. sake. Yes. Yes, there is raw sake. No, no, wrong sake. Not raw wrong there's definitely yes, wrong sake and it's generally there's... served hot when it's wrong it's and, not and, sake. And sh- wrong no that's not true you can put watermelon in it <laughs> <laughs> you put the sake in the bowl of watermelon same shit <laughs> if you have to add that much shit to make sake taste good it's bad that sake. much shit it's one thing <laughs> It Dude, was a lot of watermelon. It was like a cup full of watermelon. Yeah. I mean, it was like a snack. <laughs> Where were you? It was you? a snack on a ship. No, on a cruise ship. Oh. We were going to the pajamas. We were going to Bermuda. Yeah, that's what I said. It begins with the bee. It's in an island. <laughs> okay. It's everything I remember about the sake moment. That and no one else enjoyed it at all. <laughs> It was so bad. It and was the like server the was so excited to give it to us, though, too. Because he wanted Aww. to get rid of it. <laughs> So what, bad. What, like, 
It just didn't taste good. It's wine. I, yeah, I, I mean, I know what but, sake but is. But you've had bad wine. Yes. Yes, so I have. It, it, yeah. it's, it's the same kind of thing. It's like you have very good sake. You have very bad sake. You have very good wines. You have very bad wines. You have sweets. That's true. You have dries. It's the same kind of experience when you think about sake. You've just got to... Yeah. Figure out what you like. Mm-hmm. And find the good ones. No one liked that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know what we don't like. Apparently, there's good sake in the Japan Pavilion. because that's Except for the blue sake, which I don't know what the hell that is. Yeah, I don't know who put blue sake. Smurf sake? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Smurf. Listen. <laughs> is that like a waffle sake? Is, is it right? I, made with uh, real Smurfs? <laughs> It's very good. It's smart. It's pressed. My people prefer to be called. <laughs> we don't. We don't answer to Smurfs anymore. Okay. Okay, there's Smurfette. She was hot. I'm not. I mean, Smurfette had it going on. What's <laughs> happening right now? I'm, I'm just not saying. entirely sure. I am Adam. just saying, Smurfette can never ride Big Thunder. <laughs> I mean... She's not tall enough. (laughs) (laughs) She likes to climb up people's legs, though. I've seen her scurry along. So after (laughs) Japan, you go to Morocco. (laughs) No, you really don't. You just... I do. Yes, you do. Very good drinks in Morocco. There are. Oh. Now, Morocco had a two-way tie for first place, which I'm assuming was the only place, because I don't see anything else (laughs) on Adam's list there. It got a little weird. <laughs> yeah, because they have so much, right? Exactly. It was just, there were too many options. Now, I will say, the first one listed here was uh, also something that I get when I go there, just because I love the fig vodka. Oh my god, mm. um, so good. And this is one of Maria's favorites, the Moroccan Mule, <laughs> which, while it doesn't have mint, it has the ginger beer. Yep, fuck that. <laughs> it is sometimes garnished with mint. <laughs> is it? Okay, well, they're yes. uh, Awesome. <laughs> Double whammy. <laughs> they must it's have out. mint in living with the land that they've got the excess of to throw around for So garnishes. much fucking mint. So much. Well, it's Morocco. I mean, you would very much expect mint in Morocco. Yes, exactly. I understand so, that. The Moroccan mule is Figenza fig vodka, ginger beer, some agave, and some lime. So good. And a mint leaf or so on it. Now, the, the second place, or the tie, I guess is their sangria, which everybody raves about the sangria mm. from Morocco also. So, I mean, that, that's definitely one that... It is very I good. I want to say Stephanie and I went through there during one of the festivals, and I think she got the sangria. And I got... It wasn't the Moroccan mule that time. They had a different... Fi- it looked like it was called a fig cocktail. There is a fig cocktail, but it's hit or miss It's kind of a seasonal thing. It's just, sometimes it's there, sometimes it isn't. I have yeah. no idea why. And that one, I remember mm. after I came back and everyone asked me, and I, I raved about that one because that was like one of the greatest things I'd had in a while. But next to that for me is the Moroccan mule. I love mules anyway. I love ginger beer, and that fig vodka is so good. It is really <laughs> Yes, good. it is. I agree with that. Maria, what do you get when you're in the Morocho? Typically, we skip Morocco, but if we stop, I'm getting the sangria. Yeah. It's just... It's easy. You don't typically mess up sangria. Typically, it's basic. it is. There are a few frozen drinks that hit this that I didn't even know they had, and I'm not sure where they are. But we have a frozen citrus pomegranate slushy, which might be very good. Hmm. And then we have strawberry frozen drink, <laughs> like a daiquiri, <laughs> a Moroccan daiquiri. That's all it says. <laughs> strawberry frozen drink. <sighs> Hey. These are the people that are either helping us administrate a <laughs> Facebook group north of 3,000 members or helping us facilitate a podcast. And that is Trossel. <laughs> yeah. And, and we love yeah. you if all. If not, we'll However, be looking for some new admins. We also have Mint Tea Gin Fig. <laughs> mint Tea Gin. What the fuck is that? It's a mint tea gin thing. It's there in the title. Memory, why would you put that down? <laughs> why would I put that down? I did not, Mikey. First of all, mint. Second of all, mint. <laughs> you should know better. And third of all, thank mint. You. Mint. <laughs> the Morocco iced mint tea with Bombay Sapphire Gin. Interesting. I literally typed in Morocco Pavilion mint tea gin thing. <laughs> Well, there you go. 
also Morocco strawberry frozen drink is the Habibi Dakiri. So it's a daiquiri. Yes. Now this was from 2014, so I can't say for sure because I've also got the the juice bar has a whole bunch of frozen strawberry stuff that maybe they can oh. you know spike. I don't know. I was just gonna say, isn't the juice bar non-alcoholic? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> Typically stay away from those, Maria. Okay. Okay. Leaving Morocco with my fig drink in hand, you get double parked in France. And I'm going to guess this was a runaway. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> As it should be. Look, it's the GOAT. It's the Grand Marnier. I mean, you know, it wakes up. It pisses pure excellence. <laughs> when it gets, I mean, it's, it's, that's all there is to it. And not even just the It's the Lejeune specifically. You know, there's there's two versions of it. Okay. It's the Lejeune because why? Why not? I mean, uh-huh. go big or just go back to your room. Some people put just Grand Marnier. Some people put Lejeune. I'm assuming that most meant with the extra shot. If they didn't, then it doesn't count and it should. So, yes, it's always the extra shot. Yes. That's kind of implied. Yeah, so that would be your Grand Marnier rum, Grey Goose orange, and orange juice with the extra floater of Grand Marnier. Mm-hmm. That is the Lejeune. And it's worth every penny, although it's a lot of them. It, or you can just put slush with the floater. <laughs> As True. somebody, I'm sure, did. Yes. <laughs> no, now listen, oh, I yeah. will... You will defend Marnier yourself? Is a, is, m- m- it's hard no, to spell? No, that wasn't me. I think I think I just... I looked it up and just put Lejeune. But Marnier is a little tough to spell, and I feel pretty confident that for the first year of this podcast, I called it Mariner. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought it was from Seattle. But we would have known that. We we would have understood. Mm-hmm. So you still can. Well, to be fair, slush with a floater could actually be Maria's uh, lemon one. Yeah, it could be the citron. Mm-hmm. So Because that's what I get. It, it kind of, again, I chose Grand Marnier for that one because it was open to interpretation. I think probably most was people meant that. Was there anything not slush? Yes, there were two. Default Champagne, that's all it says, and Cure Royale, which are good. They're both yeah, great. Hi. I yeah, hi. I do like a good Kia Royale. What is so. it? Mm-hmm. I've never heard of it before. We've talked about it on here. It's... Mm-hmm. I don't listen to you. Like a raspberry, <laughs> right? Am I thinking that you don't listen? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's Chambord? Yeah. I want to say Chambord and Champagne. Yeah. Oh. It's sweet. Eh, it depends on how you... If you make it right, it's not. It depends on, the. I guess, the champagne that you get, too. Well, champagne is normally not sweet. Okay, so I know that in order for it to be champagne, it has to be from the champagne region of France, but aren't there Correct. different variations of champagne? I mean, it all doesn't taste the same. It doesn't taste the same. We could be here for hours. Here we go. Know, right? Champagne is usually dry or extra dry. I've never had a sweet champagne. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was my an next actual, question. actual, like, true champagne, I've never had sweet. I know I've had true champagne, but I don't really... Buy true champagne. One stop. Um, I, I actually Birdie. like age statement champagnes. <laughs> <I'm an laughs> oh, asshole. Jesus. Mm-hmm. And it's like stupid expensive, but it's like drinking bread. I don't like ice champagne. No. Maria, don't act like you wouldn't ice your champagne. There's some champagne you're supposed to put on ice. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant ice champagne like ice wine, like ice champagne. I was like, no, no, no. That's ice, disgusting. No. Iced champagne is oh, like there's ice. some champagnes. Moe makes a champagne that you put on ice. There's a few of them. Oh. I don't particularly care for them. Interesting. The one that I really like is like seven, eight hundred dollars. <laughs> oh Jesus! I've never had a bottle. I've only had it at tasting. <laughs> for fuck's sake! So it's half of black magic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's equal to. I think they actually use it in the black magic. They do, but that's the upsell, and that's two thousand dollars for that one, okay. right? Which is still cheaper terrible. than the drink on the wish. So, you're... Yeah. yeah, those are the only other two that made it. Everything else is the Jean, or and the only reason why I know how to say that now is because Tim makes me fucking order them. <laughs> or Grand Marnier slush. That was pretty much the main. Okay, so I guess after we leave here, we head over to World Showcase. Or not World <laughs> Showcase. God dang it. You pass by the We're International, the International Gateway, Gateway, which is the yes, proper way to which enter is... Epcot, but that's another discussion. So if you turn left from there, you wind up in the UK. And if I'm reading notes properly, our number one drink there is the McAllen Flight, as it should be. Oh, yes. Best deal on property. <laughs> when they have it all in stock, 
it is the 12, 15, and 18 year old McAllens. And I'm hoping these are half ounce pours. They may be quarter, I'm not sure. If you're only getting a two ounce pour of the 18, that's $40. Mm-hmm. You're getting 12, 15, and 18, even if they're quarter ounce. Right now it's twenty six fifty. That is really good. You really cannot beat this. For years, this has been the best deal on property. There's a new one that I don't know how many people know about this one. There's a new best deal on property or a new flight. There's a new flight. It's not here. It's actually in a resort. Okay. Oh. We're talking about the Riviera. Ooh. Oh. Riviera has whiskey flights upstairs at Topolino. Oh, Topolino. Okay. Oh. Some smoky whiskeys. I think it was 32 bucks and some amazing ones. Yeah, Talisker's. Oh. Yeah, oh, so oh. good. So if you like flights and you like whiskeys, not necessarily bourbon, but whiskey, check up Topolino. The so next time you're staying at Riviera, I'm coming over to go to the bar. <laughs> January. <laughs> can you just go to the bar at Topolino's or do you have to have a dinner reservation? No, you can take the death bucket over. Yeah. As long as there's room at the bar. Oh, they yeah. Will Generally with Disney, as long as there's room at the bar, you can go. Mm-hmm. You just have to take the chance. But it's a really nice whiskey flight. Okay. There, so. And then the number two there is the Pim's Cup, which is Pim's, so Pim's number one liqueur and Sprite. It's only twelve fifty. You also get a salad with it because it's garnished with strawberries, mint, <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> strawberries, cucumber, no, salad. and I do not believe it's mint. Damn it! I know. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Even though you'd be spending more than the McAllen flight, it's also worth getting a side shot of Bombay Sapphire. And mixing it yourself. I might need to try this next time. Yes, I'm there. you do. I do love a good Pim's cup. It's if so you, good. I would skip Bombay. Though. What? What's your gin of choice? You can pay for Hendrix if you want, but you're already paying full fifty for the Pim's cup. And if it's fifteen for Bombay, I kind of like Hendrix better. I'm a small. That's fine. I, <laughs> you know I I understand you. I feel you. He's a gin slut. <laughs> I am yes. a bit of a gin whore or a blue whale, which is not the name of it. That's because Jen calls it blue whale. <laughs> That it's, it's yes. stuck in my head that that's the fucking name of the gym, and I know it's wrong. And I couldn't tell you what it is right now. <laughs> but it's in a blue bottle, and it has a whale on it, and that's what we call a blue whale, and it's wrong. I am telling you, that's not the name of it. I will back you up 100% on that, but I will also call it blue whale from now on. <laughs> Sorry. Don't be. <laughs> It is very good, Jen. Mm-hmm. It is the wrong thing. <laughs> I mean, it's called Grey Whale. It is Grey Whale. <laughs> but the bottle is blue. Yes, it is. So it just <laughs> fucks you up a little bit. Also, Aviation Gin is pretty good. Okay, I do yeah. like Aviation. So there were some others in United Kingdom. We have any cocktail. I'm not picky. <laughs> <laughs> like, you did not understand the assignment. Not even oh, a little yeah. bit. Because mm-hmm. that sounds like me because i will drink almost anything and enjoy most <laughs> of it try anything anything once, once twice to be sure there were snake bites mm-hmm. but some people got very specific when it came to it so i didn't know how to throw that in there we had black and town we had pear cider we had jameson sour with guinness that's me <laughs> Okay. Yeah, what is that? I saw that too. So you can order a Jameson Sour. It's Jameson and Sour Mix. Okay, that's what I thought, but I got very confused. You can ask them to add a Guinness float to it. At one point, I swore I heard one of the cast members tell me a name for it. Okay. But then when I tried to use that another time, they looked at me weird. So now I just order it as a Jameson Sour with a Guinness float, and that's exactly what it is. And you can also order the double there, as you do. Now, I heard of this one, but I'm not sure what it is, and it was the Welsh Dragon. It's green. The Welsh Dragon is their Long Island. I think. Oh. So Snake Bite is half cider, half harp lager. But it can be any cider and any lager, and it can get really expensive. Yeah. So the Welsh Dragon's 13 bucks, so it's your standard price point. It's Peach Schnapps, Midori, Melon Liqueur. Adam's out. 
<laughs> Maria's out on the next one. Cream de mint. Orange juice and pineapple juice. What? Oh, hell no. <laughs> it has it's cream just... de mint in it? Yes. It's Midori. Because the Welsh dragon is the Welsh dragon is usually what I get when I go into Rose and Crown. There's a lot of flavors the, going yes. on there. I had no idea it had cream de mint in it. <laughs> okay. So Maria likes mint. Shh, don't tell her. I, di- I didn't say I didn't <laughs> like mint. I just don't understand the plethora of mint in drinks. If it's called a mint fucking julep, you expect mint there. No, bitch. You actually said, I don't like mint in my drinks. I don't like mint in my drinks. <laughs> oh, but you like no. mint, but you don't like it but, in your but, drinks. Uh, but you like the Welsh Dragon. Yes. I'm, I, I do. Toast. But I didn't. In the black magic. I didn't know. <laughs> Listen, that's a garnish, okay? It's just a garnish. Saying. Mint's the garnish. It's in there. It's in there. <laughs> it's in there. It's in there. It's a ragu. It's in there. <laughs> it's a ragu. Canada, so the notes here say beer came in first. Looking here, that's probably the Moosehead draft. Could be uh, it. Yeah. I, it, yeah. Yeah. So, and then number two was the Ottawa Apple, which is Crown Royal, maple, an apple infusion, and cranberry juice. And that runs you about 15 bucks. I've had the Ottawa apple. It is tart. If I actually put what people put, <laughs> okay, it was a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> oh, that's true. A whole lot of nothing. Well, quite honestly, my answer for this one was that I skip it and I go to the Joffrey's cart <laughs> and I get a shake in Jamaican. Yeah, I saw that, and then but my first, whatever's happening at the festival booth is another answer we got, mm-hmm. which we actually told them not to choose things at the yeah, festival booth, that's so yes. A plus on that one. Popcorn shake. <laughs> which is actually oh, yes, really no, good. Oh, it's I'm so not good. knocking it, but it, it was off the table, so. Oh, I did until I tried it. <laughs> is that also where you get that rusty nail? A rusty nail is a common cocktail. It's not. I know, but it's at one of the festival booths. Oh, I don't know. And I thought it was at the Canada one. Maybe it's not. Mm-hmm. What's in a rusty nail? Because that doesn't seem Canadian to me. I guess they make it with Canadian whiskey. Okay, ma- so maybe. So it's been a while. Crown Royal. <laughs> oh no, it's Scotch and Drambuie. None are good. Is another option that I had. Mm-hmm. For everybody who swears by Canada, their stuff isn't all that great to well, me. Well, and there's not much as far as options. No, correct. There's not much to choose from to begin with. So there's like one cart. And that's it. There's no quick service in Canada at all. No. I think this is the only country in the World Showcase that doesn't have a quick service. Oh, during festivals, if they shut down the Canada movie, then they throw a booth in there. Yes, they have that whole... That turns into a big cider. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I'm surprised that you can't find a good cider in Canada like you, I don't know. They're just there could be so much more that they could do with it. A maple cider. Oh, like what cider would be? I don't you know. Think for Canada, but that would be good. <laughs> I mean, there's maple. See, and in this the is Ottawa why apple. you make bad choices when you drink. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few pavilions that don't have a quick service. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think so. This it- Italy does it, do they? No, they have the pizza window. Mm. Uh, <laughs> when I think of quick service in Epcot, I'm thinking like a freestanding cart thing. or what? Well, no, because then the uh, quick service in, in Mexico wouldn't uh, track because... All right. Mexico doesn't really have a quick service. Uh, Are you, on the other Mexico side. Mexico has the cantina. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. right on the water. I don't call that quick, though. <laughs> <laughs> have you been there lately? <laughs> Facts. Exactly. That's yeah. the opposite of quick. Facts. <laughs> Canada doesn't have any food except for Le Cellier and the popcorn cart. And boots yeah. That's for it. the ever-present festivals. Right. If the festivals are running, <laughs> they have a booth. not counting because, yes, because it was in the rules. They, right. Did you write, did you put that in, Brian? Because you're still harping on these festivals right now. Did you say whatever's <laughs> at the festival? No. No, he did yeah, not. No job. Oh, the rules. Even Morocco has a quick service. Had, I don't know if oh, it's not open anymore. I don't know. I know it was closed for a very long time. 
I guess it really depends on what you mean by quick service. It can you if you can get a full meal there or because there are snacks throughout True. the pavilions. Yeah. I wouldn't even say they have a snack. Like, I mean, the, the Canada popcorn is the cart, worst. But yes, oh, yeah, no, yeah. No. But that would be considered a snack. Well, Canada is known for their popcorn. It's their number one export. Popcorn and Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> that's that's it. Which you I get mean, both of them at the movies. So really. You forgot Celine Dion. The greatest I mean, singer in all the world. <laughs> So that's the results we got from the host and the admins for their go-to drinks when you drink it around the world. Let us know what your go-to drinks are. Basically, what's the drink you have in Canada? Is it popcorn or is it anything else? Say or do you just go popcorn. somewhere else? Drink? Uh, you got it. I had the popcorn shake, but that's only from the booth. Booths don't count. Right. Booths yes. do not count. Now, we had a few ties going through here, and the only way to break a tie, clearly is to throw that out to the masses to have a final number one drink in some of these. Look for, for Adam's poll as he's going to sling that out there in in our Facebook group so you can break these ties for us. Uh, that way we can say for sure that the Moroccan mule is the, the better drink oh. in Morocco. So anyway, yeah, uh, we're going to hop on Death Buckets and go to Riviera right now for a uh, smoky whiskey flight and get out of here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Maria to tell us things. To tell you things. <laughs> well, there are Close these... remarks were your idea, Maria. There Fucking are egg. these things and those things and that thing and this thing and lots of... Okay. Anyway, if you want to be part of our group, come to Facebook. After that. After that thing. Thing one and thing two. Uh -huh. That's a different part. Uh, yeah, no. no, we don't have those. Uh, come to our Facebook group. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Search us up on Facebook. <laughs> Search us up Please. on Facebook. Three sheets to the mouse. Answer the four <laughs> questions, and I, I will let you in. I think we have Un person in our queue right now. Oon. Oon. Oh, look how just look one, how multicultural one. she's so, being. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's Spanish for one. No, no, it's not. So yeah, come and join us because you want more of this bullshit. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get it live. And, and sometimes it would... you get it live. <laughs> there hasn't been a live show in a while. <laughs> well, we got 300 coming up. Brian, thanks for um, pinch hitting for us this evening. <laughs> you got to say that anymore. You're you're part of the group, so. Okay, Mikey, you have you have scarred people for life. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's always a uh, joy. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing else. I love y'all. All right then. So uh, Adam, with uh, Yo. better things than Maria. Okay. So coming up next is we have a lot of events going on for our running group. We have the Disneyland Halloween Half Marathon coming up September fifth through September eighth. We have the Walt Disney World Wine and Dine Weekend coming up October 31st through November 3rd. Our official sheet up this year is running from December 6th to December 8th, which is the sheet up with no name still. I think we should just go with that. The sheet up that has no name. So the official sheet up is December 6th through December 8th. It is the holiday sheet up with no name. All right. After that, we have the fuck my life. The trading starts next week. Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend, January 8th through January 12th. That be that, and we look forward to seeing you all real soon. I will uh, piggyback on Adam with the uh, the running that's going to be happening and just kind of pimp out. We do have a sheeter who couldn't get their own ticket, so they had to sign up as a uh, fundraiser for, is that for Dopey? No, I think he's doing the half of the full. I don't okay, remember which okay. one it is. But, but it, it's that race. It's that weekend. Yeah, okay. Anyway, Mark Rubik is still trying to get some uh, some fundraising to happen to help him with his tickets. So if you want to help sponsor a poor, lowly sheeter that's in need, then, then look up Mark. And uh, those uh, posts and, and stuff are going to be found over there on our running group, Three Sheets the Finish Line. So uh, check us out there. Check us out on Three Sheets Gaming. If you're into playing video games and you want to see that group have some activity <laughs> in it, I think right now everybody's traveling and busy, so there's not been a whole lot of gaming activity that I've, that I've noticed posted there. But um, I know we are still adults and we still play video games. 
But anyway, I'm going to recommend we get out of here uh, tonight, everybody. So yep. thanks for listening. And remember, this is not goodbye. See you real soon. So good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was, I was taking a sip of my drink and it's not sorry. And it echoed through the can. I tried it to I, I it tried sounded like shine. remember those stupid toys? No, remember those toys? Like the cow like that made the cow noise? Yes. I use them when I deer hunt. Yeah, the exact same toy. Are you calling are you calling me a cow? No, is that a fat I, joke? I, if the hook fat. fits. <gasps> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. It, bring it. You have gone in on me on multiple episodes. <laughs> Maria's getting utterly destroyed. Oh, my God. All right. Moving on. <laughs> is there a heifer Whiteson in here somewhere? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh that is so funny oh lord okay i gotta go back to the document that i can't cheat on um can you say it in cow no <laughs> i'm pretty sure you would just stomp your foot one time on the floor yeah i would, I would go thump <laughs> Oh no, that's, that's a horse. horse. Straight for hook. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Adam, are you okay? I heard Adam's that. not Good okay. Job. Adam's <laughs> Adam's broken. So is this <laughs> this why you we weren't a character Adam. on Home on the Range? <laughs> yes, correct. No, we I broke mean, Adam. That's the only reason for you. I well, see, it was either me or Roseanne, and she had the name. So, but like honestly, <laughs> I'm. She had a mi- name, the name, and mange, so I heard. But they well, kept Tom that Hall under wraps. Will do that to you. Yeah, that's mm, it's a fact. <laughs>